In this video, I'm going to show you my top five video transitions inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So transition number one is the digital fake whip pan. So this is essentially just a video sliding across the screen into another video. So in order to do this, we first just want to create a brand new null object. Then you want to select both layers and then you want to parent them to the null. So you can select this box or you can just use this pick whip tool and drag that to the null like this. Then from here, you just want to zoom out, go to the bottom layer. And then we want to pull the position over to the left. So you want to pull this slightly off screen, just like this. And now what we're going to do is we are going to animate the null to animate from here to the other video. So at the end of this video, we'll press P on our keyboard to load position, create a brand new keyframe on position, move to the start of the other video, and then we'll just move this over to the right to reveal this second video. Let's play this back, see how this looks. That's good, but the problem is one, it was too fast, and two, we're seeing the black here. We're seeing this black background here. So in order to fix that, we just want to start this video a little earlier, and then we just need to start this video, and then we just need to end this top video a little bit later. So this video should start at this keyframe, and then this video should end at this keyframe. Let's see how that looks. Of course, we can add some motion blur onto this to tie this all together. So we'll highlight everything, turn on motion blur and make sure the motion blur icon is blue up here. If you can't see this, by the way, then just go into toggle switches slash modes. And now when we play this back, that looks really cool. The problem is though, you can actually see this black here. You can see this black line here. So just make a duplicate copy of that bottom footage. Now from there, you just want to take this copied layer, drag it to the bottom move the position over into the very center of our video, increase the scale a little bit so that it fills the entire screen. And now that problem has gone. So that is our whip pan. The whip pan can go from left to right, up and down, down to left. You can take it whichever direction you want to take this. But that is our first video transition inside of Adobe After Effects. Now the next video transition that we're talking about is the rotation transition. So kind of a similar process to the whip pan. We first just want to begin by creating a brand new null object. We'll drag that to the top. Then we're just going to rotate the second video. So press R on the keyboard. And we're just going to rotate that 180 degrees. So we've flipped that upside down. Then we're just going to select both of these layers. We'll use this parent and pit whip tool to link that to null two. And at the end of this first video, we just want to press R with the null selected. And then we'll just go towards the start of the second video and we'll just go 180 degrees. So this video has now flipped back up the right way. So as you can see, we're rotating from this first video into the second video. Now that was a little bit too slow. So just decrease the gap between those keyframes to speed that up. And then of course, this action just looks a little robotic. So let's select both of those keyframes right click one, select keyframe assistant and easy ease. And now that should look a lot nicer. There you go. Now there is a big problem that we are having here and that is we can see the black edges of the frame. We can see this black here and this black here. So in order to fix that issue, we're just gonna go into effects and presets and search for motion tile. We'll drop motion tile onto the first layer. And then we are just going to increase the output width to 300 the output height to 300. And then you can see this isn't looking great. So we need to mirror the edges and that now looks a lot more seamless. So let's play that back. That looks a lot better, but we still have the problem here. So we're just going to copy motion tile, paste it onto here. And now you can see that should look a lot better. The problem is though, you can still see that we've got this motion tile effect in place even with this quick motion. So to blend that all together, we're just going to make sure the motion blur is turned on and make sure this is blue. There you go. That looks really awesome. That is transition number two, and that is the rotation transition inside of Adobe After Effects. 
Transition number three is a zooming transition. So you can zoom in or you can zoom out. So again, we've got our two video clips here. In order to do this transition, we're going to zoom out of this first clip and into this second clip. So again, we're just going to create a brand new null object. We'll parent both of these layers to that null object. And at the end of this first clip, we are just going to press S on the keyboard to load scale, create a brand new keyframe on scale. Then we're just going to go to the end of this video clip and we're just going to increase the zoom or we can decrease the zoom. So let's decrease in this example. So we're just going to decrease the zoom to here. There you go. Let's see how this looks. That was good, but it was just a little bit too slow. So I'm just going to decrease the gap between those keyframes. And I'm actually going to take that zoom even further. So I'm just going to zoom out to around 30, 31. Let's see how that looks. That looks good. The problem is though, this is now not filling the screen. So we need to select the second video, press S on the keyboard to load scale and just increase this scale back up to fill the frame. Let's see how that looks. That looks good, but the problem is it's still not perfect. Now, in order to blend this together, we need to get rid of this black border. Now we're going to go into motion tile again. So we'll drag that motion tile back onto this video. We'll increase the output width to 300, the output height to 300. We'll select mirror edges. And now when we play this back, that's looking a lot better. Although you could probably argue that you could take that effect even further. So let's decrease that scale even further down. So let's go to maybe 5%. We'll have to increase the scale of this layer all the way back up again. So we're going all the way up to around 2,300%, but it's creating this really dramatic zoom. Of course, you can extend the duration between these keyframes now because there's so much movement. We do need to convert these keyframes again though. So let's go keyframe assistant, easy ease. We'll activate that motion blur. And when we render this out and play this back, we've got this really cool zoom out transition. The motion blur is the real key in this. So if we play this without motion blur, it doesn't look as strong as it would do without motion blur. That motion blur just ties everything together. These keyframes as well really help as well. Having linear keyframes makes this look a little boring. So this is with the linear keyframes. Doesn't look particularly great, but when you turn these into easy ease keyframes and turn the motion blur on, you really convert this into something special. Transition number four is a zoom warp. Now I'm going to build on transition number three and just start from where we left off on transition three and just take this to the warping level. So we've already got our zoom. This is looking really cool, but now we can take this a step further and put a warp effect on this. So in order to do this, we want to go into distort and then you've got all of these different distortion options here. Now the option that we're looking for in this distort folder is optics compensation. So we're just going to drop this onto our second video clip at that transition point. So here, we're just going to increase the field of view all the way up. So all the way up to around here. And then we're just going to reverse lens distortion so that it's coming towards us. Create a brand new keyframe on field of view at the beginning. Move to the end of the transition and pull this down to 0%. Let's see how that looks. That looks really cool. But we just need to apply this to the first video clip. So drop optics compensation onto that first clip. We'll increase the field of view all the way up. So somewhere around 200. We'll select reverse lens distortion, create a brand new keyframe on field of view. Go to the beginning of that action and we'll just pull this down to zero. Let's see how that looks. And there you go. You can see that really brings this zoom transition to life. So without the optics compensation effect applied, it just looks like a regular zoom transition, which is great. But when you turn the optics compensation on, you turn this into something really special. And then you end up with this. This looks really cool. Now you can apply the optics compensation to the whip pan or the rotation transition, and it will have a similar effect. It will take that to the next level. So feel free to play with optics compensation and create some really awesome transitions. And now the last transition that I'm going to talk about is one that is a little bit more complicated, and this one involves rotoscoping. So it's really important that you have a subject on the first video. So in this example, you can see I am doing this flip in the foreground and therefore I'm going to be the subject to cut out in this example. So first of all, you want to make a duplicate of that video. So command C, command V to copy that. 
Then with the top layer selected, you just want to cut roughly halfway between there. So we'll cut here. And this is the part of the video that we want to rotor. So just go to the start of that video. We'll go up to the rotor brush icon up here. So rotor brush tool, double click this video. Then you just want to select the rotor brush again, zoom in on the person. And as you can see, my rotor brush is too large, unfortunately. So I need to go into brushes. So we'll go window, select brushes, make sure that's there and decrease the diameter of the brush so that we can paint around the subject. So I'm just going to paint around myself like this and make sure there is a pink outline around myself like this. There you go. As you can see, that's gone terribly wrong. So I'm just going to hold option on the keyboard to turn that into a red brush and just paint around the outside of myself like this. I'm just going to do a rushed example in this case, but feel free to be really precise and accurate with this. And once you've got that first outline, you can then just press space and you can let After Effects just render out this roto. As you can see, it's doing a great job around here. It is starting to cut out my legs here though. So I'm just going to go back and address that when it starts to become an issue. So I'm just going to add this back in here. We'll remove this part here, but add in this leg here. We'll continue playing forward. We'll add the leg back in here. Get rid of this part here. So there you go. If we go into this view here, so we've got the second view, which is toggle alpha boundary. You can see this is the roto layer. It's definitely not perfect in my example. I would need to go back in and fix this. But in this example, I'm just going to leave this as it is because it's close enough to where it needs to be. So from here, I'm going to go into the main composition and you can see I've got our roto layer and then our normal layer. And then from here, you want to take your second video clip and drag it onto video layer two. We'll pull this over to the start of that roto layer. Then you just want to fade this in. So we're going to press T on the keyboard to load opacity, pull the opacity down to zero, create a brand new keyframe on opacity by selecting that stopwatch icon, move to the end of that first roto layer. So somewhere around here and then pull that up to 100. And then halfway through that fade, you just want to start fading this subject off. So we'll press T on the top layer opacity, new keyframe, move across and pull this down to zero. Let's play this back. There you go. So we've got the subjects now isolated. So the background starts to fade and then the subject starts to fade. But if I wanted to, I could also start to distort myself as I'm coming out of this. So if we go back into effects and presets and go into distort, if we go into the optics compensation plugin again and drop that onto this top flip layer, at the start of here, so when you can see this keyframe, you want to create a brand new keyframe on field of view FOV. And that should be a 0% by the way. And then scroll towards the end. And then you just want to increase that all the way up. And then select reverse lens distortion. So somewhere around here. And you can move the view center by the way, so that it's on top of the subject so that it changes the look of this. There you go. So you end up with this effect and then just move that keyframe over. So we'll go into effects, optics compensation and move that over towards the end. And now when we play this back, you can see it's starting to warp as we're going into that transition. So we're starting to warp there. Alternatively though, you don't have to use optics compensation. You can go into turbulent displacement, for example, turbulent displace. And then just at this point, so when this starts to fade out, you can just pull the amount down to zero, create a brand new keyframe on the amount and then move towards the end, increase that to a higher number. And then we'll go to the beginning, create a brand new keyframe on evolution, move to the end and spin this round a few times. Now when we play this back, you can see it warps away. So we get this really cool transition from our first clip into our second clip. Now, one more great example of transitioning is rather than using turbulent displace, we can use the luma key. So we'll drop the luma key onto the isolated subject. We'll go to the beginning where it starts to fade out, create a brand new keyframe on the threshold, scroll towards the end, and then we'll just increase the threshold all the way up until he disappears. So let's see how that looks. And you could also actually use that technique to fade in the new background. So rather than adjusting the opacity, you can drop the luma key onto the new video, 
will increase the threshold to 100 at the beginning of this clip or all the way up to a higher number. So let's go up to 255 at the beginning, create a brand new keyframe, move roughly halfway through and then pull that down to zero. So it's going to transition in with that Luma key. So the background starts, then the subject goes and that looks really cool. But those were just a few examples of what you can do when you isolate the subject from the first video and transition them into the next video. But there you go. Those are my top five video transitions inside of Adobe After Effects. So thank you ever so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully I will see you in the next video. See you there.